In the previous lesson, we learned how to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to estimate the plasma pH given the plasma bicarbonate and partial pressure of the arterial carbon dioxide. We also learned how plasma bicarbonate concentration and PCO2 relate to simple acid-base disorders. In this lesson, we'll learn a simpler way of estimating the plasma pH using the Davenport diagram, and we'll learn how to use it to think critically about acid-base disorders. The Davenport diagram provides a graphical representation of the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. It shows the arterial pH plotted along the x-axis, which usually ranges from 7.0 to 7.8. Now, although the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation does not show the arterial hydrogen ion concentration, it is included in the Davenport diagram, and it's plotted along the upper portion of the x-axis. It ranges from 100 to almost 10 nanomoles per liter. The arterial bicarbonate concentration is plotted along the y-axis, and it ranges from 0 to 60 millimoles per liter, or milliequivalents per liter. And finally, the partial pressure of the arterial carbon dioxide is plotted within the graph, and it ranges from 120 to 10 millimeters of mercury. Now let's cover the basics. First, normal pH ranges from 7.35 to 7.45, but if the pH drops below 7.35, it's referred to as acidosis. And if the pH rises above 7.45, it's referred to as alkalosis. Now with that in mind, the most valuable part about the Davenport diagram are the six quadrants, which allow us to characterize the type of acid-base disorder given the pH, PCO2, and bicarbonate concentration. These six quadrants are referred to as metabolic acidosis or alkalosis, acute respiratory acidosis, or alkalosis, and chronic respiratory acidosis, or alkalosis. Now, metabolic acidosis is defined as a decrease in arterial pH, which is usually due to a decrease in plasma bicarbonate concentration. For example, if the plasma bicarbonate concentration is reduced from 24 to 16 millimoles per liter, while the PCO2 remains at 40 millimeters of mercury, the pH will drop from 7.4 to 7.23. Next, the body compensates by lowering the PCO2 from 40 to somewhere between 35 and 30 millimeters of mercury. It does this by increasing the respiratory rate, which blows off more CO2 and thus lowers the PCO2, which helps return the pH closer to 7.4. Now, the opposite is true for metabolic alkalosis, which is defined as an increase in arterial pH, usually due to an increase in plasma bicarbonate concentration. For example, if the plasma bicarbonate is increased from 24 to 40 millimoles per liter, while PCO2 is kept constant at 40 millimeters of mercury, then the pH would reach about 7.63. However, the body compensates by decreasing the respiratory rate, which leads to an increase in the PCO2 from 40 to anywhere between 45 and 55 millimeters of mercury, which helps return the pH to about 7.47. Now, if the pH is less than 7.35, but the PCO2 is greater than 40 millimeters of mercury, and the bicarbonate is greater than 24 millimoles per liter, then this is referred to as acute or chronic respiratory acidosis, which is usually due to an increase in arterial PCO2. For example, if the PCO2 is increased from 40 to 50 millimeters of mercury, while the bicarbonate is kept at 24 millimoles per liter, it would result in a decrease in pH from 7.4 to 7.3. However, the body will compensate by increasing plasma bicarbonate concentration from 24 to about 26 millimoles per liter, which is referred to as acute respiratory acidosis. However, if the PCO2 remains elevated, the body will compensate even more by increasing the plasma bicarbonate concentration to about 30 millimoles per liter. This is referred to as chronic respiratory acidosis. On the other hand, if the pH rises above 7.45, while the PCO2 decreases below 40 millimeters of mercury, this is referred to as respiratory alkalosis, which is usually due to a decrease in arterial PCO2. For example, if a person is hyperventilating, they will blow off CO2 and lower the PCO2, let's say from 40 to 20 millimeters of mercury. 
the body will compensate acutely by lowering the plasma bicarbonate concentration from 24 to somewhere between 22 and 16 millimoles per liter. If PCO2 remains low, the body will compensate even more by lowering the bicarbonate to somewhere between 16 and 12 millimoles per liter. This is referred to as chronic respiratory alkalosis.